hands come back up. Good job, good job. From chair, we're gonna do a crescent moon. So with a crescent moon, arms are gonna come up. And we're just gonna do a gentle bend to the side, kind of like the banana that we do when we're on the floor. Good. And breathing in and breathing out. Taking in the wonder of a crescent moon and coming back up. And then to the left. And back up. And let's bring our hands down. And we all know the moon would be very lonely if it didn't have any stars. So preparing for star position, let's step aside, feet come out, a little more than hip distance apart. Let your arms float up in the star and let those fingertips shine just like a twinkling star would. We're gonna take our star and look to the right. Fingers are still twinkling. And come back over. And then to the right. I think I just saw the space station go by. Returning to center. And we come together. Time for a treat. Now's a good time to grab your friend if you want to. But once again, you can step off the mat if it's easier for you. Find your focal point. First, we're going to be doing the right foot. So ground into that right foot. Yogi's choice on the position of the left leg, it can be here at your side, it can be as simply as down here at your ankle, at your side, or you can pull it up to the inner thigh. But remember to keep your, keep your um, focal point, and when you're ready, bring your hands together. I gotta get ready again. Good job. If you can take a breath in here, if you feel steady enough, breathe in. And blow one of those leaves away. Good job. And when you're ready, come back down. Shake those feet out a little bit. Get ready to ground into the left foot. Right foot finds a position. You find your focal point. Hands on hips, hands to heart center, and when you're ready, arms go up. Breathe in and breathe out. It's very windy on the right side over here. <laughs> okay, and come on down. So after treat, let's do a child's pose. Take a little break. So come down to the mat. Toes, legs spread a little bit. Toes come together. Let your hips go back down. Let your head rest on the mat. You can stack your hands. You can have a pillow. But just take a moment in a child's pose. Remember, that's what this is all about today. Taking time. Let your hands walk over to the right side of your mat or the floor. Let yourself rest there with a little bit of a bend. Return to center. And reach over to the left. And return to center.
from child's pose. We're going to come to down dog again, bringing your knees together, getting yourself in a comfortable position because your toes tucked. And when you're ready, let's push up. This time, maybe your heels will come a little closer to the mat, but let yourself go forward and back. Maybe you had a favorite dog when you were growing up. I know I did. I know Fred did too. I imagine Aaron did. <clears throat> and once again, letting that left foot cross over, doing a little bit of more of a stretch there. And back over. Right foot crosses over. And if you feel that you want to, you can lift that one foot for a three-legged dog. And back down. And the other. And back. And then from here, we're going to return to the mat. And next is Happy Baby coming up. So we'll get ourselves situated. So we're reclined on the mat. <clears throat> Let yourself play back. Feet come up. And you can reach and grab your toes. And just let your hips work out here a little bit. Loosen them up. And then your pelvis kind of move from side to side. Happy baby. We're almost in the position. Let's let our legs go up. Or if you're against the wall, you can put the legs up the wall. Remembering, if your legs having trouble keeping up, you can pull behind your thighs <clears throat> and just reverse the circulation a little bit. Also helps with our thighs. So soles of the feet come together. You can hold your feet together here at your ankles. You can reach down to your toes and let the the, um, the knees and the thighs, excuse me, um, press down against the floor like to mimic a butterfly. It's also called the cobbler's pose. Realign your back if your back is getting a little slouchy. Head up, crown of the head up to the ceiling. And from this position, we're going to bring ourselves back up again. One more down dog. toes and lift. Once again, getting the stretch there. And letting yourself pop, skip, or walk to the front of the mat. And we're going to meet together in a forward fold of ragdoll arms. So hold your arms like this, let your head hang heavy. And just for a moment, open up your eyes and look. How does the world look upside down? That's something else we don't think about very often either. Looking at things upside down. Also, when your head's hanging heavy like this, the blood is getting to parts of your brain that maybe it doesn't 
normally get as much activity there. So that's good for you too. So let the arms kind of swing over toward the right. Don't force it, just let it swing. Back to center and to the left. This feels especially good today for some reason. I'm looking. Things look different upside down. And we'll be, pre be preparing for our final moments of Savasana. So if you need to darken the room where you are, or get a blanket or a pillow, I'll meet you back here on the mat for Savasana. Taking this time to just lay back, checking in with yourself. Is there anything that needs attention, a little more relaxing? Is your forehead relaxed? Do your eyes feel at ease? What about your ears and your neck and the back of your neck for the vertebrae? Shoulders, let your shoulders soften up and Open up, remembering that breath, that wave breath, now would be a good time to be using your wave breath, breathing in, letting it go out like a wave, relaxing those thighs, the knees, <clears throat> giving your ankles a break and your toes, Just letting yourself melt into the mat. to revisit that poem uh, that I read to you earlier today. <clears throat> if we could be but children, small children, blessed is he who could make us forget the distress of our years, with a long road yet ahead to our becoming, becoming older, sadder, and nostalgic, but rose-souled children, plucking joy like wildflowers, whose world is not yet over, with the sun laughing in the glint of their tears. We can teach our inner child that hope still exists. We can remember that no matter how old we are, the rest of our life can be the best of our life. The rest of our life can be the best of our life. We can reconnect to our Creator with simple faith, knowing and believing that our needs will be met whatever comes our way. Remember to tell your inner child about God's miraculous salvation and be inspired to trust and pluck joy like wildflowers again.
taking a little time to bring yourself back to this time of Savasana if you have left your mind wander. Enjoying this rest time. And when you're ready, if you want to introduce a few gentle movements, maybe your neck, fingertips, taking your time. And when you're ready, turn it to one side or the other into the pose of the dreaming child. Maybe you want to do a dreamy little smile. Do you feel the energy you created doing your yoga? Your arms are at rest. How does your body feel? Rainbows, volcanoes, wildflowers, oceans, stars, moons, all part of a fascination of nature and wonder of being a child. When you're ready, you can come up to an easy seated position and we'll have a few breaths together. Breathing up, center the flower in blowing that leaf away. Next breath, arms come up, hands meet together, exhale, hands come to heart center, chin to chest. Leaving you here with just a few thoughts today. Thoughts that be free to be you, Stay strong, smile, the rest of your days can be the best of your days. Lord, we thank you for this time here together, for a little community of faith, for your trinity, and for this practice of yoga. In your name we pray, amen. So thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next week. A big thanks to Aaron and Fred for being part of the yoga and inner child uh, yoga practice today. Bye-bye for now.